Hi there, um, I'm Blaine. I apologize for the weird lighting. I'm in the office today. Um, a little bit about me, I'm a researcher out of Columbia University. I work with Sheena Iyengar and Tori Higgins, so I do stuff on choice. Um, I do stuff on the power of choice, I do stuff on art perception, and I do stuff on shared reality. Um, I want to start a video series where we kind of briefly, quickly try and push through uh, little psychological or big psychological findings in a short period of time, both because I think it's fun to talk about um, and because I want to start an open dialogue and, and sort of see what other people think and what's out there. Um, we learn best when we, when we talk it out together. Um, so one of the things I've been reading lately is uh, Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow. Um, Daniel Kahneman is, Kahneman is a very famous psychologist. I'd like to talk a little bit about one specific thing that he harps on um, uh, or proposes, which is regression to the mean. Um, if you know statistics, you're probably familiar with this. Uh, if you don't know statistics, like me, <laughs> I, um, you probably haven't run into it. I certainly didn't run into this until I started st studying psychology and going to classes. So regression to the mean is this really cool thing whereby anytime we measure something, if we get an extreme measurement, the chances are that if we were to measure it a second time, we wouldn't get as an extreme, um, we wouldn't get a measure that is as extreme. What does that mean? Let's unpack that. So if I took measurements of everyone's height in school, right, and I found someone that was, you know, 7.8 feet tall, right, which is crazy tall, um, and then say I looked at their child, um, chances are their child would not be as tall as them. Statistically, the chances of being that tall is very slim. So even if someone's related to them, while they might also be tall, they probably won't be as tall, and their friends probably won't be as tall. Um, another example that psychologists love is that very intelligent women, and crazy intelligent women, tend to marry men that are less intelligent than them or women tend to marry women that are less intelligent, just tend to marry spouses. The same goes for men. Men, very, very, very intelligent men, um, statistically tend to marry spouses that are slightly less intelligent than them. Why does this happen? It has nothing to do with our proclivities. Really, really smart people aren't like on the prowl for people that are like less smart, um, despite what some of us may think. <laughs> That's not the case. Um, the case is actually just statistics. The chances of meeting someone else that is that smart because they're an extreme measure is very slim. So they end up meeting someone that's smart, but just not as smart as them. That's regression to the mean. Why is this interesting? How does it relate to the stuff I'm doing? How do we make this an open dialogue? Well, a lot of my work focuses on the perceptions of art, um, and I think this kind of relates to sometimes our experiences. So my mother uh, kind of coined this term, it's the Disneyland effect. The first time you go to Disneyland as a kid, you're overwhelmed. It's amazing and beautiful and cool and all this stuff's happening. If you were to go back again the next year, chances are your reaction would not be as strong. See what we're doing? That first measure, very extreme. Statistic chances of that being extreme again are very low. That might be because humans, you know, we're adaptive, right? Um, so we, we respond to novelty. Um, but it could be for other reasons. Um, I think that this happens in art all the time. We have really intense reactions to some artwork that we like that we've never seen before. Um, and when we revisit it, it's maybe not as powerful. Or we see something like it, um, and it's not, our reactions aren't as powerful. Um, I think that's kind of regression to the mean. It may not be that. I would love to hear other people's opinions. Um, but I think it's fascinating to think about. And I certainly love to contrast it with um, one of the other ways in which we tend to value um, art or learn to appreciate art is through exposure. This is another psychological effect that I love. So exposure just says, the more you see something, the more you like it. And we have evidence of this. The more you see someone's face, the more you tend to like it. The more a name is familiar to you, the more you tend to rate it highly. Um, it's called mere exposure, right? Uh, some of this came out of like diversity papers, like so looking at racial stereotyping and things like that, that we tend to stereotype people less if we see them more often. We've become more familiar, they're less threatening, we tend to like them more. Um, but it's fascinating because I think that's sort of divergent from regression to the mean, right? That's not saying um, that we have an intense response and then a second measure tends to be less. This is saying like over time, our measure tends to be more. So how do we reconcile those two? What's going on in art? When do you have one and when do you have the other? This is the kind of question I'm interested in and I hope someone out there is too. Um, feel free to comment, talk about regression of the mean, correct me certainly if there's something that I got wrong, I would love to learn. Um, and let's start a dialogue. I hope to keep this going. Um, I'll make a video probably every 
month, maybe bi-monthly, and when I say bi-monthly, I mean every other month, not twice a month. Um, so thanks for watching or, or listening if I've put this in podcast form, which I might, um, and I'll see you soon.